Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today this video is for beginners. These are synths that we've picked out for 2023, top 10 synths for beginners. What makes a synth great for beginners? In my mind, the idea is that you can right away start doing something with it, making sound with it. Don't even have to open the manual, you can just start. And all of these fit those patterns, but there are big differences. One of them is that some of the synthesizers can play one note at a time, very good for bass lines, very good for lead lines or sound effects, and others play multiple notes at a time. Better if you're doing chord things or you want a chord and then play a melody over the top of that. And each of them have different numbers of notes that they can play at the same time. We call that polyphony. And a synth is either polyphonic that can play multiple notes or monophonic that can only play one note at a time. So that is one of the considerations. Another consideration is, does it have a sequencer in it so that you could record notes and then play them back and maybe even play over those notes that lets you build things up. Uh, some of them have that, some don't. For example, this one even has a recorder that records you playing and then you can layer over that. So what I'm gonna do is introduce each of these synths and then play you a clip of a performance on that synth and try to just give you an idea of why it might be the right synth for you. Now, I'm not gonna show these synths in any particular order, but I am going to start with the monophonic one note synths first and then move on to the polyphonic multiple note synths after that. So the first synth up is the Moog Mavis. This is an all analog synthesizer and it's a, it's a kit as well. Not that you have to do any soldering or anything, but you do assemble the panel and you put the jacks nuts on and uh, assemble various things. It's fun, plus it lets you get to see the inside of the synth. But this is a very powerful synth. This is truly a Moog synth. You're getting Moog oscillators, a Moog filter, it has a little keyboard that you can play on, and then it has all these jacks that do voltage controlled things. So you can connect things together to try different ideas for sounds, or you can plug them into other things that have Eurorack type jacks like this. But this is just one of those synths that's really fun to explore what happens when you connect one thing to another thing and try it out. It might work, it might not, but you'll learn something every time. It also comes with a cover on the top to keep the dust off and you can just store it like that. Next up is the Behringer Pro One. This is a copy of the Profit Pro One. This is actually the first synth that I bought back in the mid 80s. And so this has special meaning to me, but it's a very, very fat, powerful synth. Again, monophonic, so it's good for lead lines, bass lines. Everything's on the front panel. There's no diving, there's no surprises. And it has two different sequencers that you can record to and then play back and you can switch between the two sequences. It's also got an arpeggiator, so you can hold down keys and it'll run between those notes. Uh, just a really great synth. And if you're into 80s music, you will hear this sound a lot. 
Uh, the one thing though is, is that this does not have a keyboard of any kind on it, and so you have to use MIDI. Now the cool thing about it being MIDI is you can use pretty much any keyboard you want that has a MIDI out. If it has a jack that looks like that and says MIDI out, um, you just plug a cable from that to this and you can play it. Next up is the East Beast by Create Audio. This is a very powerful little analog synth. Again, monophonic, one note, good for bass lines, good for lead lines, good for sound effects. And it does have a little keyboard on it. Uh, you can see the white buttons and the black keys, and that represents the keyboard, and it has octaves up and down. So you can do quite a wide range of it, but you'll mostly want to use this with MIDI. There is a MIDI in jack on this, and you simply plug this little dongle that goes from this size to the regular five pin DIN. But the key thing is, is that there's just so many ways to modify the sound. There's a lot to learn on this one. But again, like all of these, it's fun to just plug in and start having fun. Last of the monophonic synths is the Novation Bass Station 2. This has been around a while and it's because everybody loves it. It is a big fat synthesizer for bass lines, lead lines, sound effects. Again, this is monophonic, 
uh, but it does have lots and lots of ways to change the sound. You have all different types of oscillator shapes. You have several LFOs, and this has real size keys as well as pitch and mod wheel. Uh, definitely a fun one to play with. Now we're moving on to polyphonic synthesizers, which means you can play chords up to the total number of notes that it can play. And we're gonna start with the Yamaha Reface CS. It's called CS because it's modeled after their famous CS80 synthesizer. And it just has a beautiful, gorgeous sound that you'll hear. And it's very easy to use because everything is right in front of you with a slider. You can see where you've left everything. You have your envelopes and your filters and your cutoff and your LFOs and your octaves. And then it also has a built-in audio looper so you can loop things and play along with your loop, which is fun. And it also has effects. So you've got distortion and chorus and flange and phaser and delay and controls for that as well. You can also play this via MIDI with a much larger keyboard. It has lots of range. It'll do eight notes at a time, and I do really like this. And I also have the optional end caps that allow you to put a guitar strap on it so you can wear it like that and play it. It also has stereo speakers and runs on batteries, so this is a self-complete unit, and again, a lot of fun to play. Next up is the Roland Ira S1. 
And this is a really fun little beast, as you'll see in the video that's about to come up. But it'll play four notes at a time. It has a, a keyboard across the bottom, and it's actually wider than the most of these types of keyboards. This is just a little bit over two octaves, and it has most of the knobs that you need up front to start having fun, but it does have a lot of hold shift and turn this knob or hold this button and turn that knob to get other features as well. But you can just get started on it and then learn as you go. The cool thing about this one is it's battery powered, has an internal lithium battery. You can just put headphones into this, sit on a chair, sit up against a tree and program. And it is just a whole bunch of fun as you're about to see. Okay, next on Polyphonic Synths is the Mini Nova Synthesizer by Novation. And this is a fun synth in that it can do 18 notes at once, so plenty of room for holding a chord while playing a melody on top. It does leads, it does basses, it does chords and pads and sound effects. And it also has really great built-in effects. And it has these buttons called Animate that lets you do different things to the sound in real time. It has an arpeggiator so you can hold down chords and it'll run up and down through those notes. It's easy to edit. You just move the slider to whatever row you want and then start turning the knobs and it does things. And then what's sticking out over here? Well, this is a microphone and that is because this has a built-in vocoder. And what that means is, is you can talk into this, but play this and the lead line or the chords that you play will say the words that you say into the microphone. Okay, next up is the Korg Mini Log. Now this is a true analog polyphonic synthesizer. So although it plays multiple notes, it, each of them are analog. And it is very much the same as the original Korg Mini Log, uh, but it has this very cool color scheme with the different color keys. Uh, and it has additional bass programs that kind of push how good this thing is as a bass. But honestly, this does great pads, it does great leads, it does great sound effects, as you'll see in the video. This will do four notes simultaneously, and um, it's just fun to play. Next up is the Arturia Mini Freak. And this is based on the very successful Arturia Micro Freak, which is smaller and had gold leaf touch pads instead of keys. Now they've added keys 
and they're velocity sensitive. But the thing that makes both of these synthesizers really special is they have many, many, many different types of synthesizer engines. And you just turn this one knob and look at the pretty pictures to see which engine you have. Then the other three knobs are the main parameters you'd use on that synthesizer. Then you have all your standard LFO and envelopes and effects over here. But on the Microfreak, it was monophonic. You could only play one note at a time, but there was a special mode where it would play four notes, but they weren't four fully formed notes with their own filters and things like that. But you could still have fun having four notes a little bit. This one does six true notes of polyphony, but you can put it into a mode where you have 12 notes of paraphony. So there's just a lot of to be explored there. A lot of fun touch things on the front. And again, if you just want to explore all the different types of synthesis out there, this is a great way to do it. And here we have the ASM Hydrosynth, and this is the version called Explorer. Now the interesting thing about the Explorer is even though it's the smaller size, this is exactly the same power as the 49 key Hydrosynth or the desktop Hydrosynth. It has smaller keys, but these are not only velocity sensitive, but they do channel aftertouch, which means you can press them down and they have polyphonic aftertouch, which means you can have each note that you press down react just to that note. So lots of real-time polyphonic expression with that. You have pitch and mod ribbons. Um, this is just a great layout if you're trying to learn synthesis because each of the steps of synthesis are laid out in order how they flow. And if you want to adjust anything about that, you just touch it. And now all of a sudden the screen and the knobs all have to do just with that parameter. This can play eight notes at a time. Uh, so it's eight notes of polyphony. Uh, it's just a really great synth, a lot of fun to play with. And there's just many, many, many sounds built into it.
So that was just a quick overview of the top 10 best synths for beginners for 2023. Obviously, there are so many more synths that might be right for you, but I thought these were a really good 10 to start talking about. If you have any interest in these, we'll have links below that take you to the product page with all the information, plus full-length videos, so you can get a better idea about them. If you have any other questions, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or go to sweetwater.com for all your music, instrument, and pro audio needs.